Hey guys, it's Annie. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am telling you guys all of my physical insecurities, and I have a lot of them. <laughs> I originally had a whole video dedicated to both physical and mental insecurities, but it was running really long, so I'm gonna have to split these into two separate videos. So this video will be my physical insecurities, and then I'll do my mental insecurities for another video, which might actually take two videos because I need a therapist. <laughs> But yeah, grab a snack, grab a beer, I've got mine, and let's get into this. All right, so I'm just gonna start at my head and then go all the way down to my toes. All right, guys, so a lot of this is actually stemming from me just ripping props out of my hairline because I have no patience when I'm finished a character. So I would glue things to my head constantly and just rip them out. So I have like some bald spots here. Although I've always had a really weird hairline, it's always looked like, what is that, like Widow's Peak when it goes like a little further on both sides? But this side's a little worse. But that's annoying. I, if I put my hair up, I normally just shade in like around my skin here to make it look like hair. Also, this cowlick here is so annoying. If you guys know a way to get rid of it, let me know. It's, it's such a pain in the butt. Every time I'm filming, I try to make sure that I just like brush it down and then do one of these, and then just try not to move the entire video, but I do anyway because I'm very theatrical. <laughs> so yeah, that's my hairline problem. Moving on to my eyebrows. Okay, so if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll already see that this eyebrow is a lot higher than my other one, and the reason for that is I actually have broken eyelids. <laughs> This isn't even a joke, I don't know why I'm laughing. So I had gone to an eye doctor a few years back because I noticed that this eye droops a lot lower than this one. It, it, you can see the eyelid space on this eye is a little bit bigger than this one. Right now, you probably can't notice as much because I double up on my eyeliner on this side. I make it a little bit thicker than the other side to kind of balance it out so that you can't really see the difference in the eyelid space. It's funny because I get a lot of compliments on my eyelid space. People are like, oh my God, you have so much eyelid real estate. And I'm like, that's because my muscles are detaching but it's called ptosis, something ptosis. But it's where your eyelid muscles connect in here and that's stretched out so they need to be tightened. There is a surgery to do that, but not many surgeons actually do this surgery. I think because first of all, it's not very common. And second of all, it's a very delicate procedure, which is also really scary because I'm so nervous to, to actually go and get it done and have them pull it too tight and my eyeballs are like, you know, I don't know, <laughs> scary. And the thing that also sucks about it is that it's not covered by insurance because it's not technically metal, metal, metal. It's not medical until your eyelid is covering your pupil area because then they can say that that's hurting your vision. This would just be completely cosmetic because it's just something that bothers me physically. <sighs> so I probably won't get it done, at least not for a while until it like really starts bothering me. And then I'll, I'll have to search out a doctor who specializes in it. But yeah, just in case you guys were ever like, what's up with her one eyebrow? <laughs> so they explained to me the reason why this eyebrow goes up higher is because it's trying to compensate and lift my eye up. So it winds up giving me like the super bitchy brow. I've been trying to control it lately, but then when I try to control it too much, it gives me even more of a bitch face because I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I just look like I don't give a shit about anything. But um, I've been trying to draw this eyebrow up a little bit higher to kind of balance them out. It's kind of working, kind of not. I mean, I think it's doing a pretty good job today. But anyway, moving on. I feel like I have like an insecurity about everything. So like I said, guys, just bear with me through this video. I can't remember whether, can't, I can't remember whether this was always an insecurity of mine, but I remember specifically when I noticed that other people noticed it about me and then it became a full-blown, what is that word for if, when you have an insecurity and it's called, like it's called like a word. I keep saying stigma, that's not it. Oh, complex, complex. I feel like our deepest insecurities always go back to something that happened when we were younger, when you're kids, because kids are just so mean. So I don't remember whether I already had an issue with my nose before this, but, it definitely gave me a complex after this happened and it's just something that I've never been able to let go of. So I was in junior high, I broke up with this guy and then all of a sudden he started calling me Toucan Anne. <laughs> that is something that's always stuck with me for the rest of my life. So, okay, when I turn to the side, I hate this, it makes me feel so vulnerable. My nose almost forms like a beak shape. 
I always think about it whenever I'm out. I just hate anyone seeing me from a side point of view. I feel like it doesn't even look like me. I hate it. I've looked into having a nose job. There is a non-surgical way of fixing it. And what they do is they put filler in the tip of your nose so that it kind of lifts it up a little bit without physically lifting up this part here. So it won't make it look like it's like this, but it's just on the tip that lifts it up. And then also they add it to um, your nose bridge a little bit too. And that pops it out. So there's not that in cove there that goes into the beak. I think eventually I'll have something done about it. The fillers are just more of like a, a quick, easy way of solving the situation. It's a lot cheaper and I can see whether I like it or not. And yeah, so that's that will probably be my first step before a nose job because I'm kind of nervous to get a nose job and then hate it worse. So I don't know. Moving on to my lips, this side of my lips, the right side here, is a little bit thinner than this side. So I do have to plump, plump them out a little bit. You might be able to see on camera, the lip liner, I do just round this part out and I do the same for the top portion. That's not something that bothers me too much. I don't ever wanna get my, my lips filled or anything like that. I think that my lips fit my face and I don't really desire having like the big, like juicy lips. I love them on other people, but I just, I don't know if my face could handle it. But I do just like having the, the slightly overdrawn look. I might get them tattooed where they just slightly overline them. And that way that just looks like your lip shape all the time. Maybe I would do that. Oh, I forgot about my creasy forehead. Probably should have mentioned that first since we're going in order, but yeah. I mean, not much to say about this. I just have a really creasy forehead. You can definitely see that on camera, so I don't even have to like emphasize it. I just talk with a lot of expression, so it's just, it's my face is always looking like this. So it doesn't really matter what kind of concealer or foundation I use, it always looks like that. I heard that, is it Botox that you can have injected into those? But because I talk with so much expression all the time, I wonder if it would look weird on me with my forehead not moving, but like my eyes would just be like looking like they're popping out of it, my head without my forehead moving. I don't know. If you guys have Botox, let me know if you talk with a lot of expression as well and it's worked out for you because I might get that done. It's just always something that I notice. I feel like everyone's insecurities are things that someone else might not even notice in a million years. But I mean, you live with yourself, you see yourself every single day. So these are just things that are always like staring you right in the face. All right, so now we're going down here. So my boobs are something that I'm a little insecure about. Not boobs, I guess I could say boob. Can I say boob without getting demonetized? But I love my right boob. I think it fits my body perfectly. But my left boob is, it feels like it's like two sizes smaller. I've never been measured or anything like that. When I look in a mirror, it doesn't look crazy. Like I don't look like severely like disfigured or like unproportional. But I mean, I notice it. Granted guys, like I know that this is a very common problem. I, it's very rare that you actually have symmetrical boobs. It's like, I'm gonna stop saying the word boobs. <laughs> I'm not sure what I would do to fix it. I don't wanna get an implant or anything like that. I think implant illness really freaks me out. And I'm someone who's really susceptible, really susceptible to weird things. Like, I feel like if you're like one in a million person to get something, that would be me. If I do anything, I would probably get a fat transfer. There also was some kind of injection thing that I saw that like stimulated the tissue and helped promote more tissue or so, I don't know, something. I remember seeing something like that a while ago, um, but I don't know how well that works. But fat transfers, they take fat from another part of your body and then can inject it anywhere you want. But I've really heard mixed reviews on that as well. So if you guys have had fat grafting or fat transfers or anything like that, let me know in the comments down below whether it's worth it, whether you liked it. But some of the reviews that I've read and videos that I saw, some people had um, like permanent like lumps that would happen from the areas where they took the fat out of. Like when you see the videos of them actually doing the whole process, they like take this pole and they're like jamming in to break up the fat. And I'm like, oh, like I feel like you're just like, I don't know, you're just asking for like lumps and bumps in your body from them doing it like that. Oh, I'm gonna pass out. Moving on, obviously I have like a belly pooch area. I feel like almost every girl has that. But when I was in like fourth grade, maybe fifth grade, this is gonna be a weird one. I don't know if anyone else is gonna have this problem. I noticed that I had a lot of peach fuzz like underneath your belly button, like you know where, like it's on like, I guess the pooch area, but it's like the happy trail. <laughs> so I decided to shave it with a razor and now it comes back black. 
And granted, it's not like a whole like thick thing of hair that comes back, but there may be like 10 dark hairs that keep coming back and I pluck them out. From plucking them and just messing with it, I do have some scarring there. It's not a big deal once I get tan. I like can't wait for summer every single year because once I get tan, you don't see it. Now that I'm telling you guys all of my insecurities, I feel like you're gonna be looking for them. <laughs> my calves are another huge insecurity of mine. I guess I should say calf. So it's my left calf that really annoys me because it's it feels like it's so much bigger than the, than my other one. And I've taken pictures of them side by side and they're, it's not like a huge difference. I don't know if it's something that anyone else would even notice, but my one calf muscle is so much bigger than my right one. Like I don't understand how that happened. I mean, I am left-handed, so maybe it's just more of my dominant leg, but the muscle is like, I swear guys, like twice the size. What was I, maybe like 17, I got into a surfing accident. So I was surfing and the board that I was riding on swung back and slammed into my calf. So my calf was like black and hard for, oh my God, it was like a whole month it was like that. But I was an idiot and made the mistake of icing it for way too long. I was just icing it for like a week straight. I was like, why is my calf so hard? Oh, I look back on that and I'm like, thank God I didn't get like, oh, like a blood clot or something. Ugh. If you guys don't know, blood is my biggest fear. I hate talking about it. I pass out so easily. I'm very squeamish. <sighs> After I noticed that it wasn't getting better, I went to my doctor and then he sent me to a physical therapist. So I got it taken care of for the most part. They broke it up with some like machine or something. And then he would like deeply massage it. And then I'd have to do the massages at home with it as well. And then put heat on it and massage it out. To this day, it is still a little bit lumpy, not like crazy lumpy. It's probably only something that I would be able to notice, but having a lumpy calf on top of already like a muscular calf on that side, it's like, ugh. So this next thing is something that doesn't bother me as much now that I'm older, but it is like, still kind of annoying, but my lower legs, I have really large pores. Do you guys have that too? I see other people's legs and they're just so smooth. Like it just looks like, it just looks like an arm. You know what I mean? Like, does that even make any sense? Like if I'm looking at my arm, I can't see any pores at all. I feel like other people's legs look like that, but mine, I'm like, looks like a strawberry. Maybe that'll go away if I do waxing. I don't know. Let me know if you have that problem too. Just let me know if you have any of these things. Or actually, just let me know all of your insecurities in the comments down below. Make me feel better. Last but not least, guys, my toes are one of my biggest insecurities. I wish that I could wear certain sandals. I see other people in sandals and I see sandals advertised all the time. I'm like, oh, those are so cute. I just wish that I had cute toes. But I have fat, like Flintstone Hobbit toes. They're just really, really fat. I don't know, they're fat and short. But when I do wear sandals where my toes are exposed, I physically like align them. I like take my toes from underneath. Like I like straighten them out like as far as I can. I like align my second to last toe, the one that's next to the pinky toe. And I like prop that up a little bit, make it look a little bit longer. This is making me sound insane. What makes fat toes? Is it like a bigger bone? But anyway, those are all of my insecurities. I'll probably think of another one that I didn't add in here. Maybe I'll put it in the description box if I find something that I didn't already talk about. This video is so long, so if you guys made it to the end, definitely comment down below. Let me know all of your insecurities as well. I'm so curious about this topic. A lot of people don't go into their physical insecurities I mean, for obvious reasons, <laughs> but I really don't mind being vulnerable like that. You guys are my friends. And also this is one of my favorite topics to talk about with people. I feel like it just breaks the ice right away. And it just, I don't, it just reminds us that we're all human. So if you guys wanna see more videos from me, make sure to subscribe. If you like this video, make sure to like it. That really helps me out. And yeah, I'll see you guys on another video. Oh, but stay tuned for my mental insecurities. I'll have that one out probably. Maybe I'll put that one out next week. But yeah, all right, bye guys.